Overweight and obesity comprises about 70% of the population in the United States. 42% of patients are obese, obese in the United States, and 30% are overweight. We know that obesity and being overweight contributes to 42% increased risk of developing cancer. In America, we spend $7 trillion a year in healthcare, $7 trillion with a T. Wow. 30%. 30%, so $2.1 trillion is spent be, uh, because of obesity, obesity-induced healthcare dollars. And this is not all just cancer. It's diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. But, you know, obesity is just the killer. So if you came to me and said, hey, you know, what's the cure for cancer? I would say immediately, I have a drug that can cure 30% of all cancers and prevent cancers in 30 and 42% of the population. But the part that ached me was not so much, you know, the adults with obesity, but we know that being obese as a child, check this data out, as a child quadruples your risk of developing uterine cancer as an adult, <laughs> quadruples wow. as a child. The first published article on fasting and and cancer was published in 1909 that they injected rats with cancer and fasted them and found that the group of patient, the uh, rats that were fasted had tumor regression, not slowed the growth, but tumor regression. And we know that fasting during chemotherapy, there's some data suggests that might improve responses, but more importantly, it lessens the chances of a low white count. So there's definite um, advantages of fasting during chemotherapy. Number one, the food, stop eating so much food. Uh, and you know we'll, we'll focus on sugar, but it's not, and maybe on a different show, we, we can talk about this, but stop eating so much food. Give your body a chance to put everything away, to clean everything up. So it's, and it's, it, it is the reason we talk about fasting and not just, you know, eating one spoon every hour. It's not that it's giving your body a long time without a, a, any, you know, sort of uh, caloric input um, exercise, which was another one of those, uh, those pillars. Um, you know, we talked about at the time I was talking about uh, N-acetylcysteine, but there's a slew of, of these things, which if you're having a good diet, you don't need these as supplements. However, you could make a, a list of supplements if you're not able to, to get that, you know, uh, uh, through, through the diet and then sleep. I think those are, I will say those will be the same ones that'll help. I think we'll find that those same things are the things that are going to help uh, prevent cancer. You know, getting back to the weight loss thing, I think, you know, I could cure 30% of all breasts. I could cure 30% of all cancers in the United States. Takes one thing, shut your mouth. Mm. That's all it takes. Dr. Perkins, can I interject just one second? I want to bring this full circle to the beginning when you ask, well, what is cancer? Uh, this last thing you said, I think completes that circle. I've always thought of cancer as a cell that is ultra narcissistic in the way you're describing. It's a cell that doesn't realize that it's inside a body. It thinks it's just himself and whatever he can do, I'm just gonna get more for myself and more for myself. And it overtakes, you know, it takes the food from the other cells and it grows into their space and it spreads out everywhere. So it's a cell that thinks the most important thing to do is just to, you know, get me, me, me. Exactly. Me, me, me doesn't realize that it only it's only me when it lives inside a harmonious body. And in being me, 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 it ends up destroying the host and therefore it, itself. So I think it's, it's a bit of a metaphor, but I, that's just how I see things, uh, as you know, metaphorically. And I think that both the things you said kind of close that circle. And then some of these vegetables, you know, especially the cruciferate vegetables, they're super cheap. I mean, cauliflowers really come up these days, but Cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, you know, uh, not super duper popular and, you know, high end asparagus, you know, these things uh, where you can, you know, the, all this instead of you can cut a lot of other costs by eating these things. Well, I mean, you're it, when you look at just the grocery bill, your grocery bill might be higher but you have more energy during the day. You, you're not as sick. You're not taking as many medicines. You're not taking as many uh, supplements. You know, so the, the benefit is beyond just the simple grocery bill. 
But again, the thing that I'm saying is just don't eat so much. I'm not saying get the most organic, uh, you know, thoroughbred, only grass fed, grass finished beef in the world. I'm just saying don't eat so much. So How about plant based diets uh, and, and not eating red meat? Any comments from you guys, from both of you, on plant based diet? Well, I think there's two aspects there with plant based. Number one, your caloric intake is going to more than likely, depending on how you cook it, will be less. So in that in itself, you're going to you know be somewhat of the caloric restriction fasting. Secondly, um, you know, when we counsel breast cancer patients on low fat diets, you know, meat has high fat. And so, you know, there has been plenty of data looking at uh colon cancer causation. For example, you know, colon cancer is a much higher incidence here in the United States than it does in Africa. Well, Africa, they don't eat very much meat. And so, again, you know, there's data out there. None of it is like, oh, my God, this is just fantastic uh, data. But there's enough there to say, again, balance is everything. A little meat, a little fish, a little chicken, a little vegetables, not a lot of McDonald's and Taco Bell. So it's just, again, control, self-control of what you put in your mouth. 